Thanks for joining me. This is Danny and welcome back to my Realtek series. Today we are going to be setting up the excavator from Immersive Engineering. This is a large multi-block structure that will allow us to extract lots and lots of ores and very quickly. So let's get started. So in case you're not familiar with the excavator, the excavator is a large, expensive multi-block machine that requires a lot of RF that essentially extracts ores from the world, but the ores don't actually exist in the world as we would normally find them. They exist kind of in an imaginary way as mineral deposits under the ground that only the excavator can extract. And before we can do this, we first have to find a chunk that contains the minerals that we want. And in order to do that, we need the core sample drill um, from Immersive Engineering in order to find these core samples that tell us what's underground. So some of you may have seen me do this before, and if you have, maybe you can skip ahead a minute or two in the video. But just for thoroughness, since we're playing with the excavator today, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So <clears throat> essentially what you do is you take this core sample drill and you place it in the world in some chunk while you're holding it you can see that it's showing us chunk boundaries so what I like to do is I like to go at the corner of a chunk boundary where we can actually test four different chunks um, one right after another and actually I have a program that was written by Duncan Webb um, that will actually automatically do this for me so I'm gonna set this up and while the while the drone from this is from Nematocraft while the drone is doing this i'll explain the process to you um so basically we're, we're gonna need a capacitor we're gonna need this core sample drill and um, we need a capacitor in order to power the core sample drill and then we'll need a pickaxe in order to pick up the core sample okay so we set the core sample drill down the world we give it power we right click it and it'll drill down and then it'll come back up and when it reaches the top we right click it again and that'll pull the core sample from the drill um, and that's what our drone did, and then it sets it down, there's a core sample, it sets it in the world. And then that core sample is going to tell us what's in this particular chunk right here. There are no minerals in this chunk. If we put an excavator in this chunk, we will get nothing. Just drilled the last one, and we found no minerals in any of these. However, since we do have immersive petroleum in the pack, um, there are also fluids we can find underground. And we found some iron here, and we found some lava there. Um, I don't really care about either of those things, but this is basically the process and you'll find that most chunks don't have anything and a lot of chunks have stuff that you're not really going to care about. Um, but what I did find over here, something that I do care about, is dun, 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 some iron and that is a hematite vein. So if we place a excavator in this chunk, we are going to get hematite, which is iron. Now, since we have the geolysis mod installed in this pack, we're going to get geolysis ores when we do this. There's a section in the engineer's manual that tells you about minerals, mineral deposits, and it shows you all the different, well, it shows you the core sample drill and the process that I just showed you. And it also shows you all the different types of minerals that you can find. And in your mod pack, they may be different than what I have in my mod pack, but this is what we have here. Um, I, of course, have been hoping to find a kimberlite vein, which is diamonds. Um, I haven't. I've probably done hundreds of these, <laughs> these little uh, samples, and I still haven't found it yet. Um, but maybe someday. Maybe someday. So th this is where we're going to put it, because I do need iron. I'm actually pretty low on it <laughs> right now. Um, and these are all the things that we're going to need um, for the excavator. So we're going to need 26 steel scaffolding, 15 sheet metal, 1 redstone engineering block, 5 heavy engineering blocks, nine light engineering blocks, three radiator blocks, and nine blocks of steel. So what does this all mean? Um, well, it means about two and a half blocks of steel. And it ended up being about, I think it was about another stack of iron. And then we also need some copper and electrum and a few other odds and ends. But if we look here, it'll tell us what all the required materials are. And they all have check boxes next to them saying that I have them in my inventory. Now the the excavator actually consists of two different pieces. There is the excavator itself, and then there is also the wheel, um, the bucket wheel, which actually does the excavating. It rotates within the, within the excavator. Um, if you go all the way to page three, you'll, you'll get the whole thing. <laughs> so this is, there's really no sense in putting them together separately. Um, unless you just want to see them for aesthetical purposes, but you may as well go right to page three to see how to assemble this thing. Um, and of course, since we have immersive petroleum, we also have this assembler assembler projector, which if we put that in a crafting grid with the Akash or with 
the engineer's manual after we've opened it to the page of the structure that we want it will then set the projector to that structure so then I'm going to use this projector to find out where to put this in fact I'm going to put my chunk boundaries on to make sure that we are within the chunk boundaries Oops. and within this chunk so we found it in this chunk so that means anywhere within this chunk we can set up the excavator and we'll get hematite so I'm going to set it up there. Those red blocks are telling us that the blocks there are not what they're supposed to be. But if we break these, we'll be able to see what we need to place there. So this is actually going to be the bottom of that big wheel. Um, oh, and then we need another block down there. So the wheel actually is what we need these blocks of steel for. If we hold the item that we need to place, the Mercer, the, the Mercer Petroleum Projector will tell us where to place the block that's in our hand. Um, and that looks like scaffolding. It's actually a little easier to do this at night because the uh, false blocks glow then. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes which blocks are real and which ones are not. The last block. Ta-da! Now we have a green outline. That means we did everything correctly. I'm going to turn the projector... Well, shift right click the projector to reset it. And now we can take our hammer, click right there. And ta-da, there's our excavator. <laughs> I heard an explosion <laughs> somewhere. Hooray! Now we just need to give this guy power. So this is the redstone port. That's how we turn it on and off. This is the output. That's where we're going to put a chest or some kind of inventory for it to output to. These are our power inputs. This thing can take up to 4,096 R per tick to run at full speed. Um, you don't have to give it that much. You can give it as little as you want, and the speed that it goes will be based on how much RF it's getting. All right, I ran some power over here. Unfortunately, I only have low voltage um, <laughs> coming over here, but that's fine. So I'll be able to demonstrate the fact that you really don't need 4096 in order to run this thing. I'm going to put a chest there. Is that, well, actually a wooden crate. Um, we'll just leave that on all the time for now, although I will um, set up something to automatically turn this thing off when we are... I'm not going to say low on power because I don't think we will. this will ever drain all our power since we're doing the low voltage hookups over here. Um, but I think we'll check this chest. If this chest is full, then we'll, we'll want to shut it off because otherwise it'll start throwing things around. Um, and now we just need to hook up some power. So if we do that, we now have 256 RF going into this guy. And you can see if we watch, we will see that the wheel is turning really, really slowly. Now, if there are blocks under the wheel, which there are, it's going to break them first. So the first thing it'll do is it'll break like the sand block and then some of the grass blocks in there, and it'll actually silk touch them, and it'll put them in this chest. And then once it gets all those blocks cleared out um, so that the wheel can turn freely, then it'll start collecting the ores that are in this chunk, which would be hematite, and putting them in this chest. So I'm going to give it a little bit more power. And then just to demonstrate its full speed, I do have a HV capacitor that's completely full right now. So for now, I'm just going to put that down here, right there. And I'm just going to have it set to output on the other side. So if I hold down the shift key, I can set the outside, the other, the opposite side to, okay, why is it not letting me do this? So the opposite side is set to input right now. Now it's set to output. So now we should see this guy going much faster. Hooray! And we just heard it break <laughs> those blocks. And then soon, after we see a few buckets of dirt and sand, we'll eventually see some buckets of ore. <laughs> so I guess each block fills up several buckets. Oh, yeah, we've got a problem with sand falling I guess wait wait what's going on okay so there's our first ore block <laughs> and you can see it looks like the ore that it's collecting and now if we look over here in the chest we will see we got those and yay we got our first hematite nice so this is full speed right now 
Um, you can see we're get, we've already got three hematite. It's pretty fast. Now, we used up this entire thing of power. So 15 million RF just went into this thing, and it got us this many blocks. So 19 blocks. 18 blocks. Um, but now it'll continue to run, but it'll just run really, really slowly. I'll probably run some medium voltage over here, although I don't... I don't know if I'm going to bother running high voltage over here. So now I'm going to set up some automation to bring all this, this hematite back to our crusher and our ore doubling setup. Um, we're going to have to make a few changes now. Um, now since we have geolysis in the pack, we're getting hematite. And if we look at hematite, if we put hematite in the crusher, we get one iron cluster. So it's not going to be ore doubling for us. Um, but if, then if we take that iron cluster and we put that in the crusher, we then get two iron grits and a possible um, bonus nickel grit at 10%. So we're going to have to receive the iron clusters from the crusher and then feed them back in in order to get the ore doubling. But first, I'm going to set up some automation to pull from this. In fact, we're going to use our existing rail network um, because we're already bringing stuff back and forth to the factory. Oh, actually, you know what? No, we're not going to do that first. We don't want to start bringing stuff to the factory until our factory can handle it. So if you've been with me in this series for a while, you probably already know what's going on in this room. Um, we have ore doubling set up. We have some auto crafting going on upstairs for treated wood. We have some steel automation here, and it's all coming back on this conveyor belt. So whatever goes into that crusher gets spit out onto this conveyor belt, and it goes into this filter um, where... Well, and so does everything else. Everything that's being processed in this factory ends up in this filter, where some of it ends up going north into this chest. Our ore products, or our metal products or whatever, end up going into these furnaces, which are powered by this external heater, and those go to the top. Anything that doesn't have a filter ends up just going to the top. So um, that's most things that come out of the crusher. Now, in this case, when we put hematite in the crusher, um, we're not going to get something that we want to go in the furnace. We're gonna, we want something that we want to feed back into the crusher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a filter in here. I'm telling it to send the clusters, so the iron clusters, north. So they end up on this conveyor belt, which will end up having them come around, come around here. Um, and then I want to feed them back into this conveyor belt. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get rid of this conveyor belt right here. So this is a dropper, a dropping conveyor belt that sends things into this set of storage drawer, this set of storage drawers. This is our cobble work setup, um, which is also using these same conveyor belts. Whatever doesn't go in this in these drawers will actually end up dropping into this, um, which is our output, basically, which ends up in this chest out here, which then this little cart brings back to our base. So it's <laughs> there's a lot going on in this factory. So what I want to do is I want to stop this, the um, clusters before they end up here. Oh, that is <laughs> not what I want. So I'm going to put an item router there, and actually, so, you know what, the first thing I need to do is I need to get myself an iron cluster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this on that conveyor belt, which puts things in the crusher, and then I'm going to wait for it to come out, and I'm going to catch it, because I don't want it to go into the furnace, because that's where it would go. Okay, so now I have that. Um, actually, you know what, I didn't need to do that. These item routers... You, don't, you no longer actually need the item in your inventory in order to set things. You can actually grab them from JEI. So check this out. We can look up iron clusters, and we can grab it from here, and we get that little green line, which tells us we're not getting the item. We're just putting it here. So I'm going to say to the north side, we're going to send iron clusters. And then over here, I'm also going to send iron clusters to the north side. And then I'm going to place conveyor belts there. All right. So then everything else that's on this conveyor belt is going to end up going here. Um, now, just to make sure nothing gets thrown back, I'm going to put something in there that I know we will never get. How about micro missiles? <laughs> so everything that is not an iron cluster, we want to send to the west. So any empty filter will allow anything to go through. So we want to keep west empty and everything else. I'm going to put 
these micro missiles in it because we'll never have micro missiles on the conveyor belt. So now if we send this piece of dirt along this conveyor belt, it'll it'll end up getting thrown down in there and then we should see it in this chest while well, in this uh, cargo manager out here eventually. Eventually. Yep, there it is. Okay. <laughs> and then if we throw an iron cluster. Oh. I didn't really want it to do that. If we throw an iron cluster there, it's going to get sent along, and then it should end up going back into the crusher. Yay! Nice. Okay, so if I then so now if our cart comes here and it drops off Let's see which way would this be going. It would drop off the hematite there after it picks it up from our excavator. And that hematite's, hematite's going to go along here. It's going to end up going into the crusher. And then it's going to come out and it's going to get sent back into the crusher as clusters. And then it's going to come out as iron dust and then go into the furnaces. Awesome. Perfect. And then, oh, that chest is, that's legacy. <laughs> and then when it comes out of there, it's going to end up popping, you saw it just kind of pop into there. <laughs> it's going to end up popping into this conveyor belt and then it's going to come over here and get picked up by our cart. So you can see there's an iron ingot. Our cart probably has the rest of them. Oh, or they just weren't in there yet. So this is all ready. So all we have to do now is extend our rail network over to this guy. Okay, our rail is all set up. I extended the network. I had to go under the path because I just thought it would be dumb having <laughs> rails going over here. This looks a tiny bit dumb too, so I might work on making that look nice at some point in the future, have like kind of a nice looking tunnel. Um, but basically what's gonna happen now is when the rail is coming from the factory, it's gonna end up going over here. Um, dropping off whatever and picking up whatever from our house and then it's going to continue on so actually we need to set this because it used to turn back after transfer now we're going to set it to continue along after transfer so it's going to continue along this track and then it's going to end up picking up this track and then coming over here and ending here so we're on the green side here so we're going to say on the green side we're going to from the cargo manager to the storage slots and um, we're going to pull whatever and we're going to turn back because um, obviously that's the end of the track so we're going to have to turn back um, it's going to go along here and then this time it'll end up going in the left side or the right side track going in this direction and it's going to end up missing this area because of course we don't want it to drop off what it just picked up there here <laughs> we want it to continue along to the factory and then drop off the stuff which will get processed in there because we already saw that that works um, and then when that stuff comes out the, the cart is going to pick it up and bring it back to our base so basically once we audit, once we set this up everything that this thing produces is just automatically going to get orb doubled and then sent back to our base so it'll just come right to our front door here <laughs> nice so I think I think we're ready to give this a test so um, I've got this lever actually I want it to go the other way I've got this lever to stop it it's gonna well I guess we'll we'll check the whole route so it's going to the factory right now it's gonna pick up anything that's there which I don't think there is nope it's gonna head back toward our base And it'll check if there's anything to pick up or drop off, and there isn't, so... Oh no! Oh, we have solar panels, this isn't gonna work. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to do a bridge. <laughs> I kinda forgot about that. Um, crap, okay. Well, good thing we tested this. Oh, that, okay, so it works like that. That's interesting. Okay, so it's gonna come over here, it should pick up all the ores that were in there, so they should now be in the cart. Yep. So now it's going to skip our base and it's going to head straight back to the factory. <laughs> Look out. Look out, Ezra. 
And it's going to drop off our stuff here. And then continue along the track. And we should see all that stuff getting loaded into here. And then we already know that this system works. But let's watch it anyway, because it's fun. <laughs> so that stuff is going to get fed back into the crusher. So now it's going to pick those iron up. Yay! <laughs> and bring it back to our base. However, since it's solar powered, it's going to run out of power soon. But that's okay. It'll start running again once morning comes. And now we have iron back at our base. Nice! Hooray! Let's just hope it doesn't run out of power while it's under there. <laughs> at night, that would be bad. I will prevent that by sleeping. I made some upgrades to my power network in order to be able to send a little bit more power to our excavator because I'm actually producing more than enough power to fully power the excavator. Although I don't necessarily want to run high voltage wires all the way over there. As you might know, there's a limit to how much power can pass through the connectors. Um, but the, the wires, the limit for the wires is much higher. It's about eight times that of the connectors. So if we have multiple connectors connecting to this MV capacitor and then have those going coming outside two connectors going into a single wire relay um, then we should be able to get I think each one of these is 1024 so we should be able to get 2048 RF per tick now out to our excavator um, also, what I did is I, I added a couple of HV capacitors um, to s not only store power, but also to allow, allow power to pass through um, this, <laughs> or this LED display. Um, because I had medium voltage ones there too. And each side, the capacitor, or the capacitor banks are the same way. Each side can output um, whatever the connector limit is. So a, connect, so a capacitor connected to another capacitor can only output whatever... Um, the lesser voltage capacitor can output. So I have the medium voltage one. Oh, wait, do I? I may have forgotten one step here. So I need the medium voltage one to be touching two sides of the uh, HV capacitor. Um, which. Oh, okay, I don't have it doing that yet. Okay, I need to fix that one. Okay, it's a mess. <laughs> but I've got two medium voltage capacitors here now that are both connected to that high voltage capacitor and they are connecting to two connectors that are going through the wall and then they're both connected to this relay so the relays are not limited um or they're they have the same limit as the wires which is eight times as high as the connectors so and then you can see i also i had to run both medium and high voltage or medium and low voltage here so it's a little messy um I was thinking about per perhaps running these underground to get rid of this mess, but this is temporary. This excavator is not going to be here forever, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. We'll see what happens next. Okay, so now I've got a medium here, and I can actually put two medium connectors here, although I only have one. <laughs> two medium connectors. I could do three, but... The way we're hooked up in the factory, we're only going to be able to draw 2048 RF per tick, so there's no sense in having three of them. So this is going to get us started, and we're already going way faster than we were with the low voltage. Um, by the way, we were only drawing 256 RF per tick before. Okay, now we've doubled it. So, so this stuff should be coming in a lot faster now. It's not going to be full speed, but it should be definitely fast enough. For, uh, for our purposes, it'll be coming in faster than we'll be using iron. So, look at that. We've already got eight. Yay! Okay. Nice. And I also did a few finishing touches here. I made kind of a little bridge here because um, it just looked a little silly before. Um, and I actually stopped the cart for now because we were, we were producing it so slow. It was like it would do three trips and then it would bring one piece of iron <laughs> back to the factory. Um, so like, I only have, well, 34 iron, actually, that's not too bad. And one nickel, and then that steel was from something else. So I'm going to start that up. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, okay, so it's going there to check to see if there's anything to pick up or drop off. There isn't. So it's going to move on under the bridge. I'm going to grab this iron. Cool. 
Wow, there were 17 in there already, so look how much faster this is coming. Now, I don't know, I'll, we'll have to check on our power and see if it's uh, keeping up. Um, it should, actually, there's no reason it wouldn't be, but every once in a while our diesel generator will probably end up kicking in because, yeah, because we're using few, or we're using, yep, there we go. We're using RF faster than our renewable energy can keep up with. So I'm gonna stick a lever on this thing so we can just turn it off when we don't want it to be running. So we give it a redstone signal and that will stop it. And of course we can hit this with a hammer to invert it so that it only works when it has a redstone signal. And then if we turn the lever off, it'll stop it. At this rate, the iron is coming in just slightly faster than the crusher is processing it. So just as it's finishing up this batch, the next, <laughs> now the next one's coming in. The next batch is coming in, look at that. Yeah, it's almost per it's almost a perfect rate. Well, that's a complete build. We can check off the excavator. Um, in the next episode, we are going to get into some olive oil automation or some kind of food production. We're going to get started on the food production project where we're going to be working toward deluxe nachos and um, another OP food. So I hope you join me for that. If you do have any questions or comments or ideas or whatever, Feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this, don't forget to click the like button. And to join me next time, thanks for watching. Bye.